Hello everyone once again, this is DWTV2010 and here's the second part of my Fallout New Vegas character creation guide. Um, this part is going to be mainly focused on stuff that you can collect before you head out. Okay, first when, you, when you're done talking to Doc Mitchell, collect this stuff off the table behind him. And you can take that I guess also. And right here there's a doctor's bag, which is new to the game and they heal crippled limbs completely. And also in the same room, there's a broken 9mm submachine gun. And you can repair it if your repair is 25 or higher. And if you follow my guide, it should be. So you get a free 9mm submachine gun. And there's some sets of Pearl in that crate, but I didn't bother getting it. Um, the chemistry set, if you have science 25 or higher, which you should if you followed my guide, um, you can create five stim packs or some psycho buff out and other drugs. I chose the stim packs because stim packs are expensive in this game. They're more expensive than it this game in this game then in Fallout 3 so I, I highly suggest if you do that to take the stim packs also um just a note when you tag stuff like energy weapons and guns you usually get a you get an extra weapon with that but if you tag um energy weapons you get a laser pistol but you can also get a free one in that box and there's other stuff up here um you can take it if you want and sell it to the guy in town uh Really it. Um, okay, so now in different parts of the house. Uh, Pre-war books aren't worth really anything in this game. Unlike in Fallout 3, you could sell them to some person to get 100 caps per book. Because they're a lot more common in this game, I guess. Um, in Doc Mitchell's room, there are a bunch of cigarette packs. I don't know why. It's kind of ironic. He has so many cigarette things in his room. Um, there's usually stuff in his drawer. It usually varies between each character. Um... Okay, so next part I go into his kitchen. Uh, you can take, feel free to take whatever, really. And there's usually like an atomic cocktail and some kind of good drink in there. You could sell that or you could keep it, whatever you want. Um, nothing too much of interest in this upcoming room. Just the bathroom. Nothing really in there. Okay, so in the, on these, I'm right over here. Um, uh, there's a knife on top of here. Uh, there's an ammunition case right there. Usually has some good ammo in there. You could take the Buffalo Gord seat if you want. And there's two first aid kits. You could take everything if you want, like I did right there. You don't have to. Um, and I, uh, a lot of people seem to forget this. There are bottle caps on the ground. There's bottle caps on the top and there's one on the ground. A lot of people miss that. And the pre-war hat gives you, gives you plus one perception along with your plus one perception if you chose the four eyes trait so you get plus two perception so that's pretty nice and also later in the game there's um if you choose if you do boons quest you get a um a recon beret which gives you plus five critical chance and plus one perception so that's probably the best headgear you can wear and this is a banner for hardcore mode don't choose it unless you're a veteran of this game unless you know what you're doing because Stim packs heal over time. You have to eat, you have to drink to, in order to survive. So it's very complicated and it's very hard. And so right now, energy weapons and explosives look pretty low, but that's because I don't have, I haven't equipped my hat and um, glasses on. So when I equip those on, it's adding plus three perception, the, adding one from the negative and then adding the normal two. So it'll in increase by six points. So. Yeah, I'm about to put those on. These are my weapons, apparel, and glasses before. And the Armored Vault 13 jumpsuit you only get when you pre-order the game for Xbox 360. So if you haven't done that, you probably don't have that. And so, yeah, I'm just looking through all the menus again. Which are pretty nice. And I think you can change the color of your Pip-Boy in the, um, the menu. When you press Start and go to Options, I'm pretty sure you can change the color of your Pip-Boy. But I, I like this color, so. And look, my repair is already really high, and that's going to be helpful for the future. So once again, um, most of the stuff is pretty high, I have to say. And so th this is usually what I start out with. And so here we go outside. Okay, so now we're outside. And remember to look through all the mailboxes of people's houses. And, oh, wait, one more thing. Um, That message only appears if you have the Honest Hearts DLC, which is the second DLC where you go and design National Park in Utah, which is pretty fun. I played it through already, and it's it's pretty exciting. 
there's Victor. You can talk to him later at certain points in the game. Um, okay, be before you go into town, I suggest you just rob every single one of these people's houses. Not because you're a dick, but just because you get a lot of free stuff and you get a lot of free caps. And since karma doesn't really affect you in this game as much as it did in Fallout 3, I highly suggest you do it. But one key thing is you have to go into this house because there's a um, there's a skill book inside. So I go in here. This house like I, technically has the best loot just overall. When you're in here, it's it's on this bookcase. Just crouch down and you see the red book, Chinese Army Special Ops Manual. Well, that's the skill book and it increases your um, sneak by plus three. So also in this house though, there's a single shotgun, which is probably the first shotgun you're probably going to get. And there's also a lot of medical supplies in this one. And in the kitchen is a, is a Sunset Star Sarsaparilla bottle cap. And those, if you collect 50 of those and talk to the guy, talk to the robot at the um, Sunset Star Sarsaparilla bottle cap factory, you'll get a big surprise. And Okay, so one other tip. Um, these Mojave Express drop boxes, they're very helpful because when you find another one, you can ship stuff from one drop box to another one that you've already discovered. And so that's an easy way to transport stuff between towns that you've already visited. Okay, and now that you're in the, um, the shop, um, buy a shovel. Buy the shovel as soon as you can because you're going to need it to dig up graves. And graves tend to carry a lot of helpful things. And so that's one of the main things I recommend. And also, before you leave, make sure to steal this pistol. And also, if you really want to, you can murder the guy, just because it's funny. But make sure to save before you do it. <laughs> okay, and then two more things. If you go along that ridge in the distance, not along the road, not along the road, you have to go along the ridge, you go to a certain point where you reach a, a, a giant camp. If you, When you see the camp, turn to your right, and you'll eventually see a grave um, and that's Chance's Grave. Um, the Grave carries um, a knife called Chance's Knife. It's a combat knife that does more damage and it looks a lot sicker. And if you know who Chance is, he's, um, he's a great con who like who killed a bunch of people. And if you have the animated book when you got the pre when you got the limited edition, um, you got to see that. And um, in the distance, I don't know if you can see, but there's a cross out there. And it's called the Yangtze Memorial. And over there, there's well, there's a um, there's a bunch of graves, and one of them has a lot of stuff in it. And it usually has like a laser rifle and a bunch of microfusion cells and other types of ammunition. So I highly suggest you go over there, but be careful of the coyotes. And that's really it. Um, I hope this guide helped you, and I hope this makes you a better Fallout New Vegas player. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.